MemoryX is revolutionizing bringing AI to edge devices through a high performance, low power, edge AI hardware solution that is incredibly easy to deploy. IPX's Elliot here. Today we are with MemoryX and Roger Payne to talk about their AI accelerated chips. Roger, can you just start by telling us about sort of what is an AI accelerated chip? All right. So first, Elliot, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm really glad to be on your podcast today. So yes, MemoryX develops an edge AI accelerator, which is a purpose-built piece of silicon that's uniquely developed to run AI computer vision-based models targeted for the edge devices. Beautiful. So why do you think an engineer would want to include this in the next design? Well, you know... I've been in semiconductors for about 30 years, and I've had a career at Intel, 16 years there. Most recently, I was at Micron. And if you look at the history of computing, basically, you start with a CPU, which can run AI models, but it doesn't do it very efficiently. And then along came GPUs, and everybody knows about GPUs for running training in the data center, but they're not as efficient for running it on the edge due to power and cost concerns. So what we're seeing now is a new class of device that's entering the market and it's these edge AI accelerators that can be put into edge platforms that can run AI very efficiently with low power and low cost. Enough talking generally, let's talk about what MemoryX actually has to offer. Can you show me a little something? Sure. So about four or five years ago, MemoryX set out to develop a new semiconductor device and it's called our MX3. And what we've done is develop something from the grounds up, a white sheet of paper, and we develop the silicon along with our tool chain, so the neural compiler. And this is our product, and on it is MX3. And then what we've done is we've put four of them on an M.2 module. And this is a standard PCIe interface. We also support USB that can then be plugged into any installed base of computer platform as long as it has an M.2 socket on it. And then once you do that, you can then take AI models, compile them, and offload the CPU GPU and run AI processing on this type of device. Amazing. So that is the M2 you have there. What, what do you feel the point of putting four MX3s on one module is? That's a good question, because our product is a little different than some others in that each one of our chips is about a nine by nine millimeter package. And each device wow. offers five T flops of, of capability, but the flops and the, the tops doesn't tell the true story. The true story is our performance in terms of inferences per second. And we typically will outperform many other solutions that have really high top numbers because of the efficiency that we get of our hardware. Now, one of our key value propositions is our scalability. So what we can do is we can put devices in a row and concatenate them together. And then when we do that, it looks like a single monolithic AI engine to the compiler and to the software. So we can scale anywhere from five T-flops, which is one chip, up to, you know, we can attach four chips on an M.2, eight chips on a EDSFF, or even 12 or 16 chips on a half height, half length PCIe card. And so we could scale all the way up to about 80 T-flops. So scalability is, is wow. important, depending on, on how much AI processing the system needs. So you could say sort of the aim of the game is parallelization and scalability in your case. It is, it is. Absolutely. Amazing. Can we talk about some use cases of your MX3 IC and the M2 module? Sure. So basically our device was created to run computer vision based AI models for the edge. And so think of it in terms of any time you want to put intelligence into a camera stream. And so from a vertical perspective, it's very broad and very wide. So anything from a security solution to industrial applications, robotics, drones, agricultural technology, healthcare, automotive, you name it. There are so many uses for AI on the edge. Now, what we have done though, is we've basically focused in three different areas to start. That was being the security segment for video management solutions, industrial applications, including 
defect line density for manufacturing, and then edge AI PCs. Um, so those are our primary ones, but we also support all the other usages and verticals that are available. Amazing. How many MX3 ICs did you say that you could have all functioning in parallel? Well, there's really no technical upper limit. So we believe that you can have up to 12 or 16 all concatenated together. And again, on a PCI card. Now, if you start to get above 16 chips, some inefficiencies creep in. And if you need that level of uh, processing power, we're probably not the right solution for you. You probably need something a little bit um, bigger, beefier than us. But we found that, you know, for edge devices, the applications, the verticals we're talking about, four chips is enough. Anything greater than 16, we just, you don't run into too many use cases like that. Great, great. So maybe we should talk efficiency. How efficient do you find these are? I mean, we've, we've seen applications where people will be running AI models on uh, 1080s and such, and they'll be generating loads and loads of heat. They'll need three fans. I mean, what about your product? How does it go with efficiency? Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, when comparing to a CPU or GPU, the purpose of a dedicated edge accelerator is all about efficiency. And so our chip is a data flow processor. So basically it's a streaming solution and the intent is not to batch up a bunch of video frames and then send it off to our accelerator. It's take each frame and put it into our accelerator as it comes in off the camera. And what we have the ability to do is pipeline those video frames through our solution. Now, what makes us unique is the fact that our hardware efficiency is really, really high. We can get anywhere from 50 to 80% hardware efficiency, unlike many other solutions. Now, the result of being a data flow, having batch equal one processing and really efficient hardware resources allows our power to come way down. And so on average, each one of our chips runs between one to one and a half watts. Okay, so one to one and a half watts. In that sort of size, do you find that you need fan cooling for something like this? Well, yeah, so let's let's take this module and compare it to, let's say a GPU. Um, and we've done the testing relative to an NVIDIA RTX 4060 graphics card. So we can run two to three times faster AI inferencing performance, but we're about a 10th of the power and we're, about a 15th the size. I mean, if you hold up a GPU, it's much larger than this. And so what this does is it enables us to go into platforms that GPUs simply can't go into. So anything like a five inch by five inch Nook or any other industrial platform that doesn't need active cooling or better yet doesn't want active cooling because nobody wants a bunch of fans running and drawing in the outside air in an industrial uh, setting. It tends to to really shorten the life of those platforms. And so for anything that needs passive cooling, we're an ideal solution. Amazing. And these devices, they're made to run on the edge. Often on the edge, we don't have high data rates that could be taking data that's been recorded by cameras on the ground and giving them to a cloud. So you would have to be processing everything in the IC. Do you find that gives you any advantages? Well, if you compare it to some solutions that rely on the cloud, there's a couple of things. First, I think we would agree, and most of your listeners would agree, that AI processing is going to be pervasive in our everyday life. And taking all Absolutely. the data that's created on the edge and transmitting it to the cloud for processing is a couple of things. It's very expensive. It consumes networks. And so it just makes sense to take the AI processing out of the cloud and move it as close to edge devices as possible. And that way you're not transmitting a bunch of information, you're transmitting the results of the information, so the metadata. And so I think this Beautiful. is a trend that will continue. And also think about any environment or application where you need privacy. So something like a healthcare where you can't transmit patient information anywhere where you can't rely on the internet. So if you think of a manufacturing facility, Nobody wants to rely on an internet connection for their manufacturing to stay up and running. Or the perfect case is think of an automobile. Within an automobile, there's all this sensor information coming in, whether it be ADAS or even driver monitor assistance, around vehicle monitoring. None of that can rely on a connection to the cloud to run its AI processing. But 
in an automobile, you're still relying on batteries. So power efficiency is actually very, very important. Amazing. Great answer. So most engineers uh, or embedded engineers can be scared of this edge AI trend. I mean, you know, what is a T-flop? <laughs> so how, how easy do you make it for them to actually transition into using something like an AI accelerated chip? I'm talking, um, how do you train the models? How do you actually put the IC on the board? And is it compatible with most MCUs? Yeah. So two things that we've really focused on at MemoryX. The first and foremost is from day one, we architect this solution with ease of use built in. I feel it was incredibly important that we develop something that customers can deploy very seamlessly. So what ends up happening is, let's say you're someone who wants to develop a system and you develop this AI model or you train it, only to find out that you have to modify the model and either retrain it or do a bunch of manipulation just to get that model to run on the underlying hardware. This notion of a model zoo is kind of cropped up where others will do that work for the customer and they'll do a lot of model manipulation just to get it through on the hardware. And then it goes into a pre-configured set of models that sits in their model zoo. So at MemoryX, we don't have a model zoo. We run the AI models as is directly out of the public domain or custom models. And so that ease of use is really, really important so that uh, designers can focus on the design of their platform, not having to do this artificial manipulation to get things to, to just to run. And that, that really sets memory X aside from other players in the industry. Ease of use. Beautiful. We support all major platforms. So think of it as we're not an SOC, so we need an apps processor to bolt up to. We use standard PCI or USB to do that. And so we can run on x86 or, or Qualcomm or Rockchip or Novacek or Novatech or Rensys, you name it, we can bolt up to that apps processor. So tons of flexibility. We have a Windows sign driver, we support Linux, we support Android. So all those, you know, compatibility is taken care of. Um, so there, you're not going to run into any, any issues in that regard. Last but not least, <laughs> we've decided to be very transparent. And so we've put all of our technical information out in the public domain, which can be accessed at our website, including our neural compiler, our simulator, our data sheets, our GitHub examples, our model explorer, all of it's available. You don't even have to reach out to MemoryX. We don't do NDAs. We're just allowing our customers to access all of our information. And the real purpose is to get up and running as quick as possible. Beautiful. So to the engineers who are watching this, it's not as hard as you think if you go with MemoryX. This is true. So if I was an engineer and I was so motivated by the talk that we've had today, and I'm going, wow, I've got a new project and I just have to include this. How could they get started with that? Is this a chip that you can buy off the shelf? Is it something that we have to come through memory X for? How, how do I go about getting my hands on a chip like this? Um, super easy. Our module is at two distributors, both WPG and Mauser, but we're also uh, up on Amazon. So anybody out there can go up to Amazon and for $149 buy one of our M.2, which contains four of our chips on it. And then they simply go to our website, get logged into our developer hub and download um, some of the software and off to the races. Take your model, compile it, and run it on the module. Amazing. Awesome. Um, Roger, thank you so much for your time and uh, for representing MemoryX today. Um, it's never been easier to put Edge AI on devices. So if you're looking for a good, easy solution where everything is ready for you to jump right in, go ahead and talk to MemoryX, buy one of these off Mauser, and get started. Thank you very much for your time, Roger. All right. Thanks, Elliot. It's a pleasure to be here and look forward to uh, continuing the, the dialogue as AI is quickly moving forward and there's always new things coming down the pipeline. Absolutely is. Cheers, mate. Thank you.